Hi everyone, Joe for Jazby's CaseBreaks.com here coming at you with a half case break of 2022 Panini Phoenix Football Random Division Break number one. All card ship and a second half in the store now if you want to check that out. Big thanks to this group for making it happen. Thanks to the people who bought their spots straight up. And uh, congrats to the people who won their spots in that Origins International Blaster Box. There are the divisions right here. Let's do it. Let's roll it. Let's randomize names and divisions six and a five, 11 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and 11th and final time. We got Nancy, Dan to Nancy. The two spots that she won in that filler. Six and a five, 11 times for the divisions. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And once more, 11th and final time. So we got 11 there, we got 11 here. NFC South down to the AFC North. All right, Nancy, you have the NFC South. Jason with the AFC South. Russell with the AFC West. Chris with the NFC West. Michael with the AFC East. David with the NFC East. Nicholas with the NFC North. And Nancy with the AFC North. All the, all the cardinal directions grouped together here. Is that what they call them? Cardinal directions? Uh, Souths, Wests, Easts, and Norths. Let's uh, alphabetize by division. And we're going to pause the video. When we come back, we're going to see if there's any... Oh, well, you know what? We're not going to pause the video. While you're trading, I'm going to open up this case of Phoenix first, and we're going to see which, uh, which eight we're going to do. It's sort of an awkward size case here, but everyone can see. box is on the table here. And the other boxes are here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll the die. And we'll go one, two, three for this set of eight and four, five, six for that set of eight. All right. And it's one, this set of eight. Right here, that set of eight, we'll save for next time. All right, I know it might be a little hard to see, but I put some squiggly marks on the Phoenix logo right there. So you know that these boxes will be from the same case. All right, now we can flip back over here. No one in the chat trading. Well, I guess we can just roll, trade window closed. Um, keep the video rolling and we'll can print and rip. Got some play in basketball action happening in the background. And what's the score here now? We got we got Pelicans up 63 to 57. 
11.48, and the third quarter just started. All right. There's the final printout, hot off the presses. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for getting in. Appreciate it. Now, we, we go by division in this break, so that usually means there's... I feel like every division has at least one... At least one, maybe most, maybe two teams that are that have some some nice things to chase, nice players to chase. I wonder. If, seems like a lot of empty seats, but I feel like. I feel like maybe that's just because of halftime. All right, good luck everybody, here we go. We got Deshaun Watson to 175. We got Khalil Shakir to 250. Clyde Edwards Hilaire to 75. And a Contours, Kenny Pickett, insert. We got a Malik Willis and a Tyquan Thornton. Two color, dual relic, and autograph. That's going to be for the Patriots. That's the AFC East. That'll be for Michael. It's 125. So not being an NBA guy, is there a way the NBA could shorten games the way MLB has? Yeah, I mean... A lot of people complain about the length, the length of time it takes refs to uh, to replay plays. There's Velas Jones Jr. to 99 for the uh, Bears. I think there's been some. Uh, there's Derek Carr to 175. I think there's been some criticisms of like just too many fouls being called like in the last five minutes of the game, which makes it drag a little bit. There's uh, Charlie Kohler to 199 for the Ravens AFC North. Yeah, they added timeouts too, right? Does that what you Did they add timeouts? Yeah, that, I mean, that could help trim game time down a little bit. You know, because I don't know if like, yeah, you're wondering if the NBA would follow the suit. There's two. Uh, I don't know if the NBA would. I don't think the NBA is taking their cues from from MLB. <laughs> you know, it's MLB not known for uh, being that. There's a lot of things MLB could learn from the NBA. There's a uh, Maurice Jones Drew, three color patch and autograph for the Jaguars, AFC South. Jason Waters, nice mythical. Six out of twenty. Maurice Jones is maybe just a little bit taller than me, but a lot bigger than me this way, muscle wise. MJD. For all the talk of the Suns' age and thin bench, Charles is saying, what, was there talk about that? But uh, I don't think uh, 
I don't think Rex. Uh, oh, nice patch right here. Fire fabrics. I don't think the NBA really has a problem with like the 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 broadcast length of a of, of a game. Fifty five out of ninety nine. I think for the NBA, I think most time people just want to see that the flow of the game continuously happen and not be jammed up by like, you know, extra timeouts and an instant replay that's taking way too long. Like the the, mom, the momentum you start to lose, and I think that bothers some people. Soccer too. I think soccer. Um, you know, soccer. I think. Uh, has fans have complained about like you know how instant replay VAR has slowed down a game that was once kind of a free flowing game. <laughs> I think Mike, you're taking a little, you're taking Rex's question a little literally. I think uh, I think Rex was talking about just in terms of broadcast time. I know Rex is an NBA guy, but he knows there's a clock involved in the game. He knows that, but I'm just saying, are the NBA looking looking for ways to trim down broadcast time? And James and I were talking about, you know, um, for a free-flowing game, yeah. Coaches challenge jams things up. Instant replay jams things up. Too many fouls jams things up. Because they could make it a... Not only broadcast wise, just a more efficient time keeps eyeballs on. Because how, how many times do you think people change? Um, you know, I don't think how many times people change the channel when there's like here's another timeout, here's a here's a ref challenge that's taking like you know five six minutes. You know, you have a few of those a night, then you're adding, you know. 30, 40 minutes to, to a broadcast. Oh, well, I don't, I don't think that was the initial conversation, though. Like, we're not comparing the clock to a clock, but... But yeah, we're talking about something else. There's another mythical two-color patch and autograph. One out of ten. NFC North. That's going to be for Nicholas. Oh, by the way, that DK Metcalf with that nice relic right there, that's for the Seahawks. That's NFC West. Chris with that one. And there's Sauce Gardner, 94 out of 1 at 75. It's out of 199, Drake London. We'll have our team sleeve and top load all those before they go out. And there's Deontay Johnson hot routes. Out of 125, there's Stephon Diggs. There's Joe Burrow to 250. And it's Cooper Cup Fire Fabrics, NFC uh, West, Chris. Jay and Waddle to 99. And Aiden Hutchinson to 150. But yeah, I think that's where you'd be able to shave some time in, in the NBA and then keep, keep up the sort of level of action and activity on screen. And just, which just results in a better on-screen product.
Rex saying, I know by the time the playoffs come around, players should be used to the pitch clock and new rules of the pressure and stuff. Yeah, I mean, that's just another wrinkle that players were, are going to have to deal with. So hopefully the best of the best won't have issues with the pitch clock. I can see like relievers having the biggest problem with that, right? I mean, there's a lot of a lot of slow tempo slow tempoed relievers out there. I don't know, it's just part of the game. It's something that they're just gonna have to work on. But yeah, I, I could I could see some some interesting pitch clock issues. Hopefully hopefully the umps hopefully the umps uh, will also, you know, maybe give it a little extra leeway because of because of the intense nature of the playoffs. Rory, what's going on, man? Do the Lakers take the series from the Grizz? <laughs> Is that a serious question, Rory? You think there'd be a universe where, I mean, there might be an alternate universe where I would say no. But obviously in this universe, absolutely. Lakers in six. <laughs> There's Anquan Bolden. Jersey and autograph. With a healthy, actually, in all seriousness, with a healthy AD and a healthy LeBron, all things are possible. The caveat, of course, is health. Uh, 48 out of 50, Anquan Bolden. NFC West, Chris. Ooh, give me, do I, should I give it the, the Barkley guarantee? Guarantee! There's Godwin to 175, hot routes. I think Barkley did guarantee it the other night, didn't he? The Lakers would, would win that series. Ooh, Malik Willis? Ah, I thought it was going to be an autograph here, but a nice three-color patch. That's for the AFC South. That's for Jason Waters and the Titans. 21 out of 25 rookie jumbo materials. Christian Kirk to 125. I do not want Barkley guaranteeing anything for the Lakers. 114 out of 150, Daxon Hill. You thought the Lakers, oh boy. I want Barkley not to say those things about the Lakers. Do you really? Barkley, Barkley's two words were Lakers will win it all. It's a little more than two, Gilo. I don't know. I think um, I think the I think Stephen Adams is not gonna be fit for the playoffs, right? Or at least for this round, which I think could be a big benefit for Anthony Davis, who doesn't have to you know doesn't have to contend with Stephen Adams on the defensive side of things. Or on both sides of the court, offense and defense. He should be able to operate a little more freely. Have you not seen the Barkley? No, I've not seen. There, there's a Barkley video about his two words. There's another Taekwon Thorne for the AFC East. That's for Michael. I just thought you couldn't count, Gilo. I thought you were having trouble counting words. We got Andrew Booth Jr. to 175. Got a Romeo Dobbs to 199. Got a Drew Brees to 150. Fire Forge. Malik Willis. Got a Chris Olave to 250. And a Cam Taylor Britt to 35. Is everyone eyeing a Chris Olave as I feel like that's gonna be the 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 hyped fantasy darling once fantasy football season starts to roll around. He's got Derek Carr, he's got this, he's got that. It's not anything about the Lakers, but Barkley can't. So it's, oh, it's Barkley who can't count his own words. 
Ernie, Ernie, I got four words for you. And then he gives him like eight words. Is that is that the video? Lakers losing the Clippers workout. Yeah, I, I want to see how the Suns Clippers go. I think the Suns should be fine. I feel like I feel like they're gonna win that series somewhat comfortably. I feel like Clippers not having Paul George, I think, is going to be a problem over the course of the seven-game series. That's pretty much the video. Okay, I, I, I'll have to look that up, Gabe. James is saying, I'm here for fantasy football, targeting Garrett Wilson, Devonta Smith, Jalen Waddle this year. Yeah, especially if, if the Jets get their man. In the QB spot. If they get a rod, Aaron Rodgers, then then yeah. And Garrett Wilson. Yeah, I I I'm in an auction league for, for fantasy football. I shudder to think what those what those receivers are gonna or like to, what Garrett Wilson is gonna cost if Aaron Rodgers is there. You, know, you might be a keeper, actually. All right, onwards. Another box. We got a Malik Willis, 2 out of 10. Another nice patch. Even lower number. AFC South, Jason Waters. We do not do PPR. Tyreek Hill, that is a parallel, but it's not, not numbered. It's Andrew Booth Jr. to 175. A lot of numbered cards in this. Brandon Cooks to 199. Not Brandon Cooks to 99, but Brandon Cooks to 199. Got a Garrett Wilson. Speaking of Garrett Wilson, hot routes. This is Danny Gray. Two color, I'll we'll give it to you, a little sliver of red right there. Two color patch and autograph, NFC West, Chris. Ah, then don't go with your picks other than Garrett Wilson. I like the Jalen Waddle pick. I think he can get catches and yards. And TD targets. Devonta Smith still might... I don't know, he, these guys, those guys still work in a non-PPR setting. I feel like Devonta Smith could get you like three catches for 120 yards and a, two touchdowns, or some, something wild like that. He can still hit you with those numbers. You know, if Jalen Waddle ups his sort of TD, I guess maybe Jalen Waddle is more, may lean more PPR. But he can have some explosive plays too. There's Cameron Thomas, 8 out of 10. There's Aaron Jones, out of 75. Nice low number for that Cam Thomas. No, not basketball player Cam Thomas. This is football player Cam Thomas. NFC West. There's Trevor Lawrence, to 150 for the AFC South. Is Derek Carr for the AFC West for Russell to 150. Another Derek Carr to 175 this time. And we got Kieran Williams, 34 out of 99 for the NFC West. Chris, last spot mojo, striking again and again. The TDs are hard for Waddle and Smith, but you think Devonta Smith will overtake A.J. Brown this year. I could see that. It's Kirk Cousins to 35. All right, we're halfway through this eight-box break. We've got another about 20, 25 minutes to go.
Well, speaking of this football talk, I can't. Uh, let's uh, let's hurry up and let's get the NFL draft happening, right? There's a uh, there's a there's a uh, site called Walter Football that, that that gives you an alternative mock draft. We'll take a look at that. Yeah, me too, Steve. Yeah, I don't. I'm not a fan of fillers either. But no one bought those teams. I wish someone would would have just bought purchased them straight up. Gave everybody a fair warning and all that. No one answered the bell. No one answered the call, Steve. So that signaled to me that people wanted fillers. But we'll get there. We'll get there. Two teams, they would have been gone by them, maybe. We know, we'll, we'll never know. But hey, instead of worth, you know, it's, it's in a filler now. Let's just get that done, ladies and gentlemen. Especially if you're in pick your team four. You know, it's down to 12 now. So Steve, I mean, if you help out with a spot, if everybody in who bought teams help out, helps out with a spot, that break, that could be our very next break right after this. There's Brady to 75. And pick your team five, four teams left. I thought those four would probably would have been full by now, but those aren't either. Get after it, ladies and gentlemen. Let's avoid the filler. There's Jahan Dotson to 125. That's going to be for the uh, NFC East. David for the NFC East. James Robinson to 75. I appreciate that, Steve. And if, if you help out with a filler spot, that might even go twice as fast. 46 out of 99, Jerome Ford. You may stumble into a box of prison basketball as well. To 75, there's Patrick Mahomes. Like I said, if everyone per who purchased a spot bought a spot in the filler... I mean, we actually, we, we wouldn't really need everybody. We just need 12 people from the break to get a spot just so they can see their own break. Might stumble into a box. Let's make it happen, folks. Jaspiescasebreaks.com. I'll drop the link in the chat for everybody. Brand new release. 12 left. There's DK Metcalf to 250. And Brian Robinson. Junior, dual relic and autograph. Another one for the NFC East, David. It's Alec Pierce to 99. Would love to do that diamond dozen as well. We've got full spots and, and we're down to the last filler. Let's get that done. Let's get it all done. But I, we can't get it done without you, ladies and gentlemen. I need your help. Remember, you control the when a break happens. All right, another box down. Another three boxes to go. Yeah, that final, yeah, that final diamond dozen may have a one of one Joe Jaspi autograph, valued at about a about a dollar, maybe two if it if it's a PSA ten.
Yeah, yeah, I might get dinged for my horrible penmanship. Steve Herrick, what's going on? Good evening. Oh, yeah, the Walter football. Pretty good. He's got C.J. Stroud going number one to Carolina. And then Bryce Young to Texas. Yeah, Bryce Young to, to the Texans. And then Cardinals taking Christian Gonzalez. Colts taking Will Anderson. Not a quarterback. Seahawks taking Jalen Carter. Lions taking Bajan Robinson, running back. And my Raiders taking Paris Johnson, offensive tackle guard. I like that. I wish that's what the Raiders would do. Or defense. Maybe a, maybe a Tyree Wilson, who's the next pick for the Falcons. So where does he have? Oh, he has he has a, the Titans taking Anthony Richardson. That'd be interesting. Any other quarterbacks? That he, he has Will Levis going to the Buc falling to 19, going to the Buccaneers. Some wide receivers taking the late first round. Yeah, check it out. WalterFootball.com. Free plug for WalterFootball.com. It's a pretty fun site. If, I mean, if you're tired of all the usual talking heads on the major networks, given their mock drafts and their thoughts, you can try an alternative. There's Matt Corral. And there's Sam Howell to 175. His stock's been going up. People talking about how it's probably QB1 out there. Nice, Steve. You got some uh, spots to get some baseball breaks going this year. I appreciate that. We've got a Justin Herbert autograph. Wow. Star Signs Auto. Justin Herbert. And that's going to go to the AFC West. Russell with a spot he got straight up. Got randomized to AFC West. Got the Justin Herbert. I don't see a number on it. But it's still nice. There's Tyron Davis Price to 175. Lamar Jackson Gold to 75. And the next hit is a Jalen Tolbert. Three color jersey and auto. Dallas, NFC East, David. Oh, you finished the latest Ted Lasso. I've not seen a single episode of this season's Ted Lasso. I gotta catch up with it. I've been watching The Mandalorian. There's Mark Andrews. And then my next sort of show that I've been eager eagerly waiting for is Barry on HBO. While Jaspies is a family friendly show, Barry's definitely not a family friendly show, but one that I enjoyed. It's Jonathan Taylor, seventy five. Nice little dark comedy. But a sharp show. Sharp show. A lot of layers. There's Terry McLaurin hot routes. There's Tyler Aguirre to 150. Flamethrowers, Justin Herbert. More Justin Herbert flamethrowers. This time, this is numbered to 150. And behind Trayvon Walker is a Desmond Ritter relic. That'll be for the ATL NFC South. That's for Nancy. 33 out of 99. I was hoping autograph. Ah, you can't watch The Mandalorian. You're traveling. You got to wait to watch with the fam. I, I can tell you, it's only Wednesday, and West Coasters, we're lucky, we get, we get to, it releases on like midnight, like 11.59 on a Tuesday, for the Wednesday release. So like, I'll watch it, I've watched it already last night, when I get home, it's usually past midnight, and so that episode's waiting for me on Disney+. Plus. So like, I went, I watched it. But I got to give it like an extra day or two before I can, because I feel like most people are like watching it like tonight. And then we can probably start talking about it a little more in earnest tomorrow. 
So fans of Jaspies and The Mandalorian, watch it tonight. <laughs> so, or if you hear me start to talk about it, you can just mute me for a, a, a beat or two, a moment or two, a minute or two. Yeah, it was the long, I think it was the longest episode of the season as well. And a couple moments where you're like, oh yeah, I figured that was going to happen. And then another moment that I was wondering how they would handle, how they would tackle, and they tackled it delightfully. Gilo, you know what? Gilo's thinking, I think Anthony Richardson will be one of the first two QBs taken. That would, uh, that would mess up a lot of mocks. But you know what, Gilo? It's rare... Well, actually, do 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 the uh, mock drafters usually nail the first couple picks? There's Randy Moss in '99, but after that, I feel like it's just not. But yeah, I mean, it could happen. No one thought Mitchell Trubisky was. In... No one thought the Bears were going to trade up for Mitchell Trubisky. Here's George Pickens, piece of his jersey, AFC North, Nancy, '94 out of 149. But Gio, your 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 statement, your guess is as good as any mock drafter, as good as Mel Kuyper's. I think Richardson could be one of the first two taken. Aaron Jones to 75. I feel like I, I, mean, I haven't watched a lot of interviews of any of these quarterbacks and I have not interviewed them myself, but from what little I've seen, it, 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 it seems like Anthony Richardson sounds the most mature of the quarterbacks. And then, you know, then he does, like, backflips and stuff like that. And I, f I feel like that's something that, like, that's something that, like, owners would fall for. So, like, the, his GM and all the other coaches are saying, oh, we got to take the other guy. We tied it. I don't know. It's like, and the owner, you know, he signs the checks. He's the one who's going to be like, ah, I really like Anthony. <laughs> And then they're like, oh, okay. Yeah, it sounds like an Al Davis move, right? There's Joe Namath to 125. And there's Amir White. Piece of the pigskin and his autograph. I'd love to see him get a little more work in this year with my Raiders. Give Josh Jacobs a little, little time off. You know, he kind of redshirted his first year. Now he's kind of has his feet wet in the league. He knows what to expect. Get him a little more, some more touches. You've seen so much debate on Will Levis. Yeah, it's Christian Kirk to one ninety nine. And then what about what about Hendon Hooker? There's Devin McCourty to two fifty. A lot of lot of scouts and mock drafters saying that's first round talent if he was healthy. First round talent that might who might fall to the second or third round. It's going to be crazy. Traylon Burks, 25. With so many quarterbacks potentially on the table to be picked, there's Jerome Ford, which is good for the hobby, right? Which is good for us, ladies and gentlemen, because there will be some nice teams and some nice players to chase. But we'll see where all, the, where all the QBs fall. We got Tyler Algier. Autograph. A, uh, NFC South. That will be for Nancy. CJ Stroud, Gabe's hearing, is not easy to coach. That's a red flag to me. Hey, what is not easy to what, what do you think not easy to coach means? Is he going off script? Is he is he is he not doing jumping jacks with his uh, with his teammates? That kind of not be able to or is, or is it not easy to coach? As in he's a dummy. He can't grasp the playbook. What? What? Let's get. What are the more? What are the details on not easy to coach, Gilo? Well, 
Why don't the Raiders take Lamar? Because they've got far more issues than uh, than quarterback. Lamar Jackson would require two first round picks in consecutive years, which would be an essential, you know, brick builders for brick building pieces for the Raiders that they just need. And they can't pay him like $50 million a year or whatever and still pay other positions to field like a decent team. Otherwise, it's Lamar Jackson with a spotty offensive line running for his life, forcing passes Devontae Adams. That's the season. And then the defense giving up 40 points a game. <laughs> Or being unable to get stops when they have a lead in the fourth quarter. That's why. Trust me, a lot, a lot of fans in Raider Nation be like, let's get Lamar at any cost. Danny read an idea that the Seahawks could trade both second round picks to get a third first round pick and pick Hooker toward like towards the end of the first round. Wow, that, that would be I mean that would be sharp. The Seahawks are in an incredible position, I think. Whatever whatever we thought the Seahawks were gonna be in the preseason. They definitely exceeded expectations. They went to the playoffs. Geno Smith looks like, you know, in sort of the sunset of his career, seems to be finishing strong, you know. And they've got all these first-round picks. If they were able to snag, you know, with those three first-round picks, that's like franchise-changing. Especially if you get the quarterback of the future. There's 10 out of 10 Steve Young. I mean, that, that would be... With Garrett Wilson, that's a catch. I mean, that would, that would be an incredible turn of events, I think. Especially if Hendon Hooker works out. You can, get a, you can get a... You can get an offensive lineman that could protect a Seahawk quarterback for 10, 15 years. And then you can get a, you know, pass rusher or someone on the defense that could, that could change the game for the next 10, 15 years, and then you can get a quarterback. Yeah, NT and Flawless, there's going to be a lot of uh, expensive teams next year. A lot of teams with new quarterbacks. It'll be pretty pricey. We've seen it before. We'll see it again. There's Khalil Mack to win it. I feel like the last year or two we've been a little... Because there was a run, right? Where there were there were two years in a row where a quarterback went one and two, and there were still top five quarterbacks, multiple quarterbacks being picked in the top ten. I think only in the last year or two, no, maybe only in the last year we've had a little re reprieve, reprieve. There's Tyron Davis Price, two color dual relic autograph for the NFC West, and next year it's going to ramp up with quarterbacks again. Okay, see, up two. Ten minutes left in the game. Ah, so Gabe's saying Tim Couchish in terms of uh, um, in terms of CJ Stroud. C was saying earlier he's from Ohio State, bottom line. But he thinks he's above everybody. Oh, so he thinks he's the smartest guy in the room. So he doesn't want to what take advice, learn from his teammates, take suggestions. Probably not following game plan. Probably goes off script. There's on of a night to 125. Yeah, I mean, it could be a problem in the NFL. Jamar Chase to 175. I mean, what's the one thing we hear all the time, right, from rookies? Speed of the game, speed of the game, speed of the game. That's like the first thing they notice, how different that is. How just amazingly fast game speed is. You know, how quarterbacks... Say, man, those pa that pass rush gets to you a lot faster than I thought. The corners get to their spots a lot faster than I ever thought. There's a mere white 250. But, oh, look at this. Last hit 
of the last box in this half case break, a Kenny Pickett rookie autograph. That is for Nancy and the AFC North. Wow. Play to the whistle, ladies and gentlemen, just like Coach would say, right? Coach always says play to the whistle, and that's what you got to do, ladies and gentlemen. All right, big thanks, everybody. I think Baker Mayfield did go to Tampa Bay, right? I think he, he might be given a shot there, or at least he'll battle with Kyle Trask. All right, nice break, boys and girls. Second half of the case is Justin Herbert as well. Second half of the case is in the store, another random division break. JaspiesCaseBreak.com. We're selling five full spots and uh, and just one filler. And there you go, gang. Thanks for watching. I'm Joe for JaspiesCaseBreaks.com. I'll see you next time for the next one. Good football chat. Bye bye.